Now we play a round called It's Getting Hot in Here, so take out all your jokes. <laughs> this game involved Tiff and Ramesh, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Magazines. Who wants to come in that? OK. Tiff. As a woman, most of your life uh, is designed to make you feel a little bit shit. <laughs> and magazines are responsible for that. You know, magazines like OK, which I look at on the shelves and think, when are they going to stop putting people on the front of that who are quite clearly not OK? <laughs> um, magazines will recommend that you have plastic surgery. That seems to be everywhere. Too much plastic surgery these days. I think that's why they've invented emoticons. Right, they're for women who've had too much plastic surgery, so you can just hold up an iPad and say, I feel happy. <laughs> I feel sad. I feel like a smiley poo with eyes. <laughs> but, uh, I think the worst thing uh, that magazines do is they perpetuate trends, really bad trends, right? I don't know how you guys feel about vajazzling. <laughs> but I genuinely believe it is a plot by religious groups to get gay men interested in vaginas. <laughs> making them look like disco balls. <laughs> I told my mum about the vajazzling, right? I said, Mum, they do this thing now where they put Diamante on your downstairs. And my mum just went, vajazzling? In my day, you were lucky if you gave it a wash. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chef. OK, that leads us with Ramesh. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is parenting. I'm a parent. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we had our first child, and uh, our first child is such a lovely kid. You know, he always says please and thank you. He's such a wonderful, wonderful little boy. I said to my wife, do you know what? I think we might have mastered parenting. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just about setting clear boundaries and being consistent. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, feral. Right. <laughs> Like, I love him, but what a prick this kid is. Like, <laughs> I love him, but what an unacceptable human being. Like, I love him, but I don't like him. You know, that's... <laughs> like, I'm gonna have to say to him one day, you're a mistake. And not, like, in the way that the contraception went wrong. Like, the decision to have you was a mistake. <laughs> Sometimes I want him to get hurt. There you go, I said it, I said it, I said, now listen. I don't mean really hurt. I don't mean really hurt, I just mean a little bit. You know, because he doesn't listen, this kid. <laughs> when I say to him, don't do that, dude, because if you do that, you're going to get hurt. And then he does it, and he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> that pisses me off, right? Because that is life telling him that I'm full of shit. This kid's running with scissors with no consequences. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Again, the points go to Come on back, both of you. And the first topic is health. Who wants to come out? Nish. I had a bit of a health emergency uh, last year. I was doing the washing up and I cut my hand. I was washing up and I pushed my hand into a glass. The glass shattered and it slashed my hand here and I had to go to hospital. And let me tell you this, the NHS staff are incredible. They're really nice to me. They're really sweet. One of them called me a brave boy. Uh, <laughs> Which is good, cos I was being one, so I don't know what you're laughing at, OK? <laughs> I'm the one with the badge. Anyway... <laughs> before I did that, uh, I did something which I probably regret doing. I called NHS 111. Now, if you don't know what this service is, it's a service the government has brought in to replace NHS Direct. So if you have a non-life-threatening emergency, you're supposed to dial 111 on your phones. Now, I'm sure that these people are very nice, but based on my experience, they are proportionately less skill than their numerical value compared to 999, because... <laughs> It was the blind leading the blind. At one point she said, how is the blood? And I said, red, cos I had no idea. <laughs> then she said, is there a lot of blood? I said, yes, cos there was a lot of blood. And she said, is there enough to fill a mug? <laughs> I got no idea. I don't wish to brag. I have a lot of different mug sizes in my house. <laughs> also, while this was happening, I was just panicking. I wasn't decanting the blood in the hope it would be poured back into my body at a later date. Then she said, is the blood flowing or oozing? I said, I have no idea what the difference is between those two things is. And she said, oh, there's a difference. <laughs> 
going into a semantic debate with you while blood is gushing out of my hand. And she just went, gushing. Thank you very much. Well done, Miss OK, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Now the topic is transport. <laughs> when I was at school, my bike was smashed up. It was my own fault, really. I just handed out leaflets saying, bullying, let's break the cycle. <laughs> We've been over this again and again and again, said my driving instructor, pointing to the badger. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there is actually a road in the north of England called Quality Street. And there's only one person living in it, and he's both Turkish and delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky, isn't it, if you're both a moth and a sea captain? <laughs> In charge of a ship. But up ahead, you see a lighthouse. <laughs> you know you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Toilets in trains are rubbish, aren't they? Especially the one right at the front, and the bloke in there gets so cross. <laughs> Come on, come on, Mark. First up is language. Who wants to come in with us? Chris. Language, apparently, uh, mm. was uh, developed by humans to help them during hunting. That's what people will tell you. I don't buy that. I think language is more likely to have developed spontaneously, probably be between a cave couple who are just furious with each other, incandescent with rage, but completely incapable of expressing their emotion, just standing opposite each other in the cave mouth, going, vroom, 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 until something had to give. And one of them finally snapped and went, yeah, you prick! <laughs> and went, oh, it's all coming out now, isn't it? <laughs> Never clean this cave up. This place is a tip. Well, why didn't you say something before? Well, I couldn't, could I? <laughs> I'm gonna pick you on. My mother warned me about you. Oh, really? How? <laughs> Uh, Bantu, the Bantu uh, languages of the uh, Southern African peoples, they speak with a system of clicks and tuts, this kind of... <coughs> using the throat and the tongue and the... <coughs> constantly surrounded by horses they've no need of. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare for them. Bantu for go-away horses. <coughs> They're screwed. Really, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is home life. Who wants to come Sir. My, um, my home life involves no children. I don't really like children. Uh, and if you ask, uh, most of my female friends don't have kids. If you ask any woman who doesn't have kids what would worry them about having kids, the answer would always be childbirth. So, from what I understand of childbirth, it changes your downstairs, doesn't it? <laughs> it changes your downstairs. I quite like my downstairs the way it is, thanks very much. Certainly don't want an extension. <laughs> <laughs> but it's bound to change, though, isn't it? Because you're forcing a person out. That's what you're doing. You're forcing a person out. I've never forced a person out. I forced a couple in. <laughs> in a shop recently and this little boy came running over to me, put his hand in mine and shouted, Mammy! And I thought, oh, sometimes forget me keys, but I think I'd remember that. <laughs> and then his dad came over and I thought, I wonder if this is the best chat-up line ever, and his dad's going to go, no, no, that's not your Mammy. Remember, your Mammy left us cos my willy's too big. <laughs> Interviews. Who wants to come in that? OK. Matt. Go for that. It's fascinating watching different politicians and how they deal with interviews. Uh, Ed Miliband, when he gets asked a question he doesn't like, would just have this amazing technique where he'd just ask himself a new question and answer that instead. <laughs> and it really works. He got asked before the election by Nick Robinson, uh, Mr Miliband, you've said you'll set a new mansion tax if you become Prime Minister, but you won't yet tell us at what rate you would set it. And Miliband just went, look, Nick, if you're asking me have I got a plan for the housing market, then the answer's yes. <laughs> amazing. Farage is one of the best ones at it, cos no matter what you ask him, he'll get a political answer in some way. You could say, Nigel, uh, what have you had for breakfast, mate? And he go, tea, toast and the telegraph, great British breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> he always manages to get his messages across. Boris Johnson is fascinating, because he just loves avoiding questions, and he uses a twin-track approach of flattery and Latin. <laughs> And this genuinely works. If he was here now, you could say, Boris, come on, just admit it. You want to be Prime Minister? 
They go, oh, no, 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 let me just say, you know, great to be here amongst such great learned people on this crucible of culture. Reminds me uh, very much of a, a phrase my father used to use, you know, divitas, uh, divitum, uh, rectum. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Matt, very good. OK, so James is left. Let's see what he's been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is Britain. I wish I was Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> love everything about... I love Mexican food. My favourite place to eat is a Mexican restaurant called Oaxaca. Uh, all, all you need to know about Oaxaca, everyone steals their spoons. Uh, so much so that every January, Oaxaca have a spoon amnesty on. <laughs> you bring back one of the stolen spoons, and then they reward you with free tacos. Genius. <laughs> Not only do they get their spoons back, they also get to watch while the thieves eat tacos, which I imagine have been interfered with beyond belief. <laughs> <laughs> love Mexican food, love Mexican music. Mariachi music, best music in the world. Top three mariachi songs. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number three, nothing, because there are no other mariachi songs. <laughs> Ever been to a mariachi nightclub? It's full of people just going up to the DJ, like, hey man, have you got da 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 Growing up in school, I was the only kid in my whole school who liked mariachi music. It was a nightmare. I couldn't walk down the corridor without some knob knocking my sombrero off my head. <laughs> Step on the back of my poncho on the way in a maths class. <laughs> Once, a kid wrote chimichanga bum boy across my forehead <laughs> while I was having my post-lunch siesta. <laughs> he also drew a moustache on my face, but to be fair, that played into my hands. <laughs> Very good. It's close, but for sticking to the topic, James A. Faster gets the points. Well done to both of you. Come on back. The subject is family. Who wants to come out of that? Russ. Uh, so, <laughs> it wasn't easy growing up trying to be a little liberal kid in the most right-wing family in the whole of my town. My dad was the most right-wing person I knew, but always quick to point out, I'm not racist. But that was the danger <laughs> word. I'm not racist, but all the latest remix, which is even more innocuous and dangerous, all I want to do is have a sensible discussion about immigration. Yeah? <laughs> Isn't it? <obvious? laughs> all right, no one with that face wants a sensible discussion about anything. I just want to have a sensible little chat in the back of that transit van over there. Yeah? <laughs> Me and my brothers, the rest of your family, Mr. Woolamer Woolamer Long, whatever your bloody name is, mate. Yeah? Right. My dad even managed to be prejudiced about my first car decision. How do you even achieve that? By British or German. Do not bring crapanese onto my driveway, boy. <laughs> not only that, but I chose a hybrid car. Part electric, part petrol, papa. Right. <laughs> Another question mark hanging over my sexuality. It's <laughs> the noise of it when it drove off. Thanks for Sunday lunch. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> and the topic is jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work at a Christian rock festival selling toasties. <laughs> The best day was when I sold this Jewish bloke some yellow ham. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was a dustman. I didn't like him coming to collect us from school, though. <laughs> Not because I was ashamed he was a dustman, it's just he never knew which day he was going to come. <laughs> The rest of my family were police marksmen. <laughs> Apart from my grandfather, he was a bank robber. <laughs> he died quite recently, <laughs> surrounded by his family. <laughs> my 
uncle, he's a police frogman. Uh, no, sorry, he's a French policeman. <laughs> I used to work in a supermarket. It was my job to hand out samples of things for people to taste. Uh, but I was asked to leave after the little cups of bleach incident. <laughs> after that, I worked in a pathology lab. Uh, but I was asked to leave after one of my reports said, cause of death, autopsy. <laughs> And the first topic is home life. Nate. Yeah, I could talk about home life. Um, I, uh, I still live at home with my mum still. <laughs> Thanks for the judgmental silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I live at home. Um, my, my mates give me the most stick for it, because I'm the last one in my group of friends who still lives at home uh, with my mum. They've all moved out, so they see me as a mummy's boy. And every time they see me, they're like, Nathan, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you still at your mum's, man? Are you embarrassed? Why are you still at your mum's? Why are you still at your mum's? It's like, I live in West London. Have you seen house prices? I'm not going anywhere, man. <laughs> if anything, I'm looking at my mum thinking, when are you gonna bloody leave? <laughs> Cleaning on, let it go, woman. <laughs> She's gonna slap the black off me when she sees this. <laughs> so, yeah, I like peace and quiet. Although, to be honest, at home, I, I'm not getting a lot of peace and quiet at the moment, uh, mainly because of my mum and my stepdad. Uh, they got married quite recently. And um, I'm happy for my mum. You know, she's found happiness. She deserves it. However, at the moment, they're going through um, that whole that, that honeymoon phase where they're having sex all the time. <laughs> yeah, it is bloody disturbing, man. Because <laughs> uh, my bedroom is, like, right next door. So, like, every time they do it, I hear everything. Like, um, a few Saturdays ago, right, it's late at night. I'm about to go to sleep. From next door, I can hear my stepdad going, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, lad, oh, lad, say something nasty, say something nasty, say something nasty. <laughs> so I screamed out, you're not my real dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jordan Denton. OK, that leaves us with Ed. Let's see what topic you've been left with. And the topic is diet. I hope this isn't just a hint that I need to lose weight. Because uh, <laughs> I've, I've lost quite a lot of weight recently. Uh, anyway, I've lost uh, about six stone in the last uh, three years. Cheers, guys, thanks. I mean, no. <laughs> Too late, you went with the British reaction. Thank you very much. <laughs> couldn't give a shit, mate. Carry on. We don't... <laughs> stop showing off. We don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Found myself in a bit of a nightmare situation recently. Uh, I went to the Middle East to do some gigs. Uh, now, that bit was nice, that was lovely, but they put you up in a hotel where the food is all-you-can-eat buffets three times a day for ten days. Now, this is a nightmare scenario for me because I cannot be trusted at an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even remember the buffet bit. All I remember is picking up a plate and I'll wake up six hours later covered in rice <laughs> and sauce. <laughs> and I can't theme a buffet. I can't theme a buffet either. I won't pick up a plate and go, oh, I'll have some rice, I'll have some curry. Well done, Ed, you've made yourself an Indian meal. <laughs> I won't do that. I'll get a plate, I'll get a spoon, and I'll run along the full line of trays, <laughs> just scraping food from every nation onto it until I've got some sort of plate pangea, <laughs> just an unidentifiable mass, just Spanish food, Japanese food, Chinese food, Indian food, coffee, sushi, just horrible. <laughs> just wedge my face into it, everyone going, is that man all right? Don't look at me! <laughs> I'm having a buffet! <laughs> from all over the world. My body for 10 days had no idea where I was on this planet. <laughs> I went for a shit three days in, a UN flag came out. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Get on, Ed Campbell. Come on back. The next topic is charity. Joe, are you going for that? All this talk of famine makes you a bit peckish, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It's comic relief, right? Keep asking me if I'll go out to Africa, you know, to sort of comfort people. But how are they going to feel with me getting off the plane? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> You're all hungry, are you? I've had a good dinner. <laughs> <clears throat> and, you know, there are just there are huge problems to be tackled in Africa. I don't know if you know this, but actually in South Africa, you can insure yourself against getting raped because if you catch the HIV virus, Treatment's really expensive. 
And what's that going to be like? You know, you're walking along, some bloke jumps out from behind a hedge, gets his ghoulies out, and you think, oh, Christ, there goes me no-claims bonus. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Joe, please. <laughs> OK, let's have another topic. Topic is crime. Who's coming in? John. The most important thing to remember about crime is that any law only makes sense in context. Look at sport. Punching someone repeatedly in the face is lauded in boxing, but is seriously frowned upon in table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, if you come out of your corner in a boxing round bouncing a little ball on a bat, it's going to be literally seconds before you're staring at some lights. <laughs> Furthermore, noses. Now, there's a man... There's a man who'd be on pretty much anyone's list of top five Jews, but think about it. When he led the children out of Israel, he was technically guilty of 3,000 counts of abducting a minor, bush arson, trespassing, and abducting the sea. <laughs> and yet he walks free today. There really is no justice. <laughs> well done, John. Very good. Sit down. <laughs> Leaving us with two contestants. One topic we'll give you. Fight it out. Straight battle. What's the last topic this week? Ah, uh, <coughs> Chirac, Europe, let's say. Uh, Hugh, do you want to go first? Britain isn't getting on very well with France at the moment, and it is partially because the French are a bit snooty. Uh, for example, take Concorde. Do you know, in the original version of Concorde, the French had their plane built with the front hinged the other way round, so it could turn its nose up when it landed <laughs> on the front. <laughs> but the kind, of, um, the kind of European integration we don't, any of us seem to mind, is town twinning. Uh, everybody wants a French, you know, town to twin with. And I didn't know how it happened, actually, until I recently went to Swindon, uh, met a bloke from Swindon Council. He told me that apparently it's very like getting a teenage pen pal <laughs> on the basis that Swindon was getting on very well with Monte Carlo <laughs> until they sent them a photograph and never heard from them again. <laughs> very good, very good. Welcome to you. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> what? It is a head-to-head. -head. Uh, Al, on the topic of Europe. Uh... Well, of course, the, what's happened here is the French... <laughs> <coughs> the French have voted against Europe and now expect us to cough up for it. <laughs> it's the classic example of the French attitude. They've lost the plot, basically, completely. I mean, these are people with a town called Brest and none of them think it's funny. <laughs> In any other country, a melted cheese would be regarded as a f up, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're up to something, aren't they? No, they're, well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Staying over there with their own customs. The point is, I think... <laughs> I mean, that, that Eiffel Tower's a tragic waste of Meccano, isn't it? As a result, <laughs> French boys have nothing to play with except themselves, and that's how it started, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Al, thank you very much. Thank Al Murray, give a round of applause. Oh. Talk to say, I'm giving it to you, I'm giving it that side. Sit down, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> The first subject is leadership. Uh, leadership looks fun, but it's stressful. Just look at anyone leading a conga. <laughs> On the outside, it looks brilliant, having a great time, all the time just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, you bloody are. Yes, you bloody are, mate. In their heads, just going, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I didn't plan a route. Oh, I never asked for any of this. <laughs> God, I miss my family. <laughs> Everyone's trapped in the conga. <laughs> you think you can leave? You can't leave. Person at the back, maybe, they could let go and make a run for it. Everyone else, you let go. You're not out the conga. Now you're the leader of a rival conga. <laughs> You've got turf wars to worry about. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you're second from the back, you let go. The one person behind you loves congas, isn't giving up for anyone. <laughs> and trying to mingle at the party with a maniac on your hips. <laughs> and have a serious discussion about the Lib Dem conference and still going hell for leather. <laughs> You'd have to go swimming just to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to lead a conga. Never going to lead a free cheers either. I don't know who these lunatics are. I don't know where you acquire that level of confidence. Just get up in a room full of people. Three cheers for Jackie! Hip, hip! 
What if everyone goes, no? <laughs> Not three cheers for Jackie, she's an unpleasant person. <laughs> How about no cheers for Jackie? Hip hip, shut up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yay. Okay, that leaves us with Gary. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. Okay, the topic is health. Where you go? I'm a lot sportier than I might look. In fact, I picked up a little niggle at the gym the other day. I mean, he pronounces it Nigel. I had a very stressful journey getting here today. All the way, this lorry driver was right up my ass, but it was nice of him to give me a lift. <laughs> no, I spent most of the afternoon hanging out at the swimming baths, and then somebody told me and I tucked it back in again. <laughs> <laughs> I put on a lot of weight recently, so I rang up Weight Watchers. I said, it's an emergency. Can you send somebody round? And they said, yes, we can. We got loads of those. <laughs> <laughs> My grief counsellor died recently, but luckily he was so good I didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally kicked the dog earlier and he bit me on the bollocks. My mate said, it's karma. I said, no, if anything, he's even more angry. <laughs> <laughs> I asked the vet, what can I do? I think my dog's racist. He keeps barking at the Asian man next door. And the vet said, Muslim. I said, I don't know, but he's got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I went round to see my nan. I said, what you been up to? She said, weed in the garden. I said, well, at least you didn't shit in it. <laughs> I was in the garden with my girlfriend earlier, and we saw the 18-year-old girl next door, all doled up, ready to go out clubbing. And my girlfriend said, do you know what? At that age, I could really see myself in her. Which was weird, cos I was thinking the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Point there for David Come on.